<laughs> Two days later, Chris is still talking. It's like, God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, so here we go. We are we are live. I believe this is session seventy one. Um. Yeah, that would make sense. Sixty eight, sixty nine, seventy seventy one. Yep. There we go. Uh, and yeah, and we've we've like picked up some viewers on YouTube. People have like watched some of the videos, and people have commented <laughs> on some of the videos. <laughs> Um, Yay. We have one guy Coming who's we had one guy who's watched our Call of Cthulhu game, and he's like, "Oh, I don't know if I should watch Forbidden Lands next or Pathfinder next." <laughs> um. So. So. Excellent. Hey. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, so yeah, if you happen <laughs> to be watching this, complicated. Yeah, we love hearing comments. Yeah, comments are great. So yeah. Uh, I'll I'll do the like like and subscribe this video plug. <laughs> see, see if that helps. Like, subscribe, oh, is, comment. Whatever. This is definitely my favorite game that we play. I love this game. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, definitely. We all do this full time, so we need it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it feels like full time. It's I mean, I I did the math. I'm currently only running six games and playing in four. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's yeah. a gamer household. Uh, but Forbidden Lands, uh, it has been a while. Uh, holidays and holidays and holidays. Uh, but we uh, managed to script. We managed to scrape together time in between holidays to to have this session. Uh, so you guys are uh, you guys have defeated the dragon, uh, harvested some uh, some dragon parts. Uh, and we're making your way north to the Dwarven refugees to tell them that you had freed their freed their home. They were free to go back uh, in exchange for them uh, teaching Trustia some of their, their ancient magics. Uh, and hopefully uh, giving you guys access to their uh, their forge so that you can use the dragon parts to, uh, to make a weapon. Um, the plan is to make a, uh, a weapon that is a housing for the, uh, the Elvish gems that you found. I mean, we're not going to call it an infinity gauntlet, but <laughs> we'll like scrub the serial numbers off. I don't think it'll be a gauntlet. Well, a gauntlet's it's a weapon. An infinity. Mm, I mean, I do have Berserker. Yeah. Or uh, what was the other one? Brawler. Bra yeah, which I've never once used. Now you punch <laughs> someone once with your head. Maybe. Once. Once upon a time, <laughs> far enough back that I don't remember doing it, <laughs> and then Desi found her best friend. <laughs> uh, but on your way back to the dwarves, you uh, you came across an, an orc army, a very well organized uh, orc army. Oh yeah. Not a not a rampaging horde, but a disciplined military unit. Uh, and you get decided to go and say hi. Yeah. <laughs> That's what is that, is that how we're phrasing it? We decided. That's how we're phrasing it. Under escort. <laughs> right. Um but these uh these uh these orcs, this orcish clan, uh under the orcish emperor Hiroka. Um uh, their their symbol is a blue flame. And previously, you had found a, a note tied to a messenger bird that said, uh, Dear sister, the blue flame has awakened. Beware its wrath. Signed by Brother Knight. Um, so, not sure what exactly is going on there. The orcs seemed relatively hospitable. Um, you learned during interactions with them that they possess the other two gems. Uh, the other two gems they have liberated from Jakku's. Um, and there was some negotiation as to uh, what was going to happen with those two gems, whether they were going to give them to you, whether they were going to try to take yours by force. Uh, but the Empress, um, who seems to be the true power behind the throne, has decided to, uh, to kind of sleep on it and let you know in the morning, as it were. Uh, but during the night, uh, you guys are awakened... Uh, by screams and sounds of battle as these uh, you kind of peek out of your tent 
and these dark winged demonic figures are descending upon the camp uh, in significant numbers. And uh, I think that's where, uh, where we'll pick up. So as you guys uh, kind of like look out, um, yeah, there's, there's got to be a dozen or so of these demonic things that are just storming the camp, dropping down out of the skies upon the orcs. Um, seem to be like enveloping them in like uh, pockets of darkness. Uh, from which you can hear muffled screams, and then when the, uh, the the darkness clears, there's like a dead orc. Looks like it's been kind of like frozen solid. Uh, orcs are like running around, gathering weapons, uh, doing their best. Uh, weapons seem to be ineffective. Uh, as you watch, like battle axes and swords and spears are going right through these demonic entities. Like they're not even there. Like they're made of like nothing but fog and darkness. Oh boy, uh, this is uh, not Galdi's uh, claim to fame here. Uh... We need the gems. And we need to get out of here. Are we sneak in and steal gems? Yeah. You're likely the best well. choice we have to convince her to give us the gems. Uh, they're kind of distracted at the moment. And I'd be quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. It is uh, and my stealth is not good enough for this. Don't wow, steal man. it. Talk uh, her into giving us the gem. She was humming and hawing already, so. Do we have to stop these demons first? I don't think that's possible. Don't mention you know any magic. She doesn't like sorcerers. <clears throat> that's why she won't tell us her name. That would make it easier. Will we disarm? With Kaldi, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> She's... When I talked to her alone, uh, she was weighing giving us the gems to let us do the dirty work. Um, and kind of and debating. Can I, Can I get to her? Can I get to her to talk to her? I can show you where her tent is. Yeah. Please. I can... And make sure no demons Either, kill me. Uh, try not to. Either I could escort you or Lagok could escort you, but he might be kind of busy. Uh, why don't you escort me? I don't know this Lagok guy. Uh, the orc who led us here. Or yeah. who okay. is wait, standing wait, 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 wait. our tent. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll tell you with Lagok. Lego, can, uh, can I talk to the boss, please? It's kind of busy right now. I put my last two notes in the chat. Okay. Uh, will we uh, design? Let's, uh, do you mind if uh, Desi takes me over to see her? You know, looks uh, at the fighting. And every you can see like some torches starting to like light up and stuff to kind of illuminate the area a little bit. That's good, because right now I'm just seeing a big dark rectangle. Oh, hey! Oh, <laughs> pockets of light! <laughs> Excellent. Light's overrated. I mean, not for me. Oh, dear. Well, these, well there's so many of them. Uh huh. There are yeah. indeed. Kaldi can see everything in, like, you know, bright as day. <laughs> Uh, Where's Chris? the boss's temp? Trusty's gonna put on the crown and see if that stops the magic. Okay. And light a torch. 
I just don't know if we're in round yet. Uh, not until you guys actually engage somebody. So yeah, you light up a torch, and you can see, and you can see in these pockets, it does seem like these demons are staying out of the light, uh, but they may do occasional like swoop down out of the sky. The darkness shuts off the the light momentarily, um, but by and large, they're they're being more tactical when there's light involved as opposed to just swarming around. Do we know anything about these particular demons? Uh, let's call that a lore roll. I had a demon book. I do not have it anymore. Would have been handy, Rainbow. Yeah. Yeah, you guys aren't entirely sure. I mean, it could be if they are. I mean, it seems like they, they favor darkness with this, like, darkness um, uh, envelope that they seem to, to be able to exude. They're probably shying away from the, the light for that reason, but you don't know what effect the light actually has on them. Uh, but yes, the, uh, the Empress's camp or tent is basically across the battlefield. Let's go. Let's roll. Right. Uh, so as you guys kind of move out, whichever one of you is the worst at, st at stealth can make a sneak roll. My roll is three. Minus four. Only because I have high agility. <laughs> I have no stealth. <laughs> Minus six. Ooh. Uh, Okatai. All right, I'm going to roll, because I'm sure nobody has lower than three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Okutai's agility is higher than three. I will take that. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so you guys kind of pick your way uh, following um, following Kaldi. Uh, trust this as a torch lit, so you can kind of see where you're going. And you do see periodically... There, there are um, some of the orcs that have been that have been felled. Um, look like they've been they've been frozen solid. Uh, some of the other ones though look like they've been dropped by uh, by like claw slashes. Uh, so it's not a, it's not a purely like magical attack. There's like some physical damage inflicted upon the orcs as well. Uh, and everywhere you hear like the the shouts of battle here and there and everywhere. Uh, but you guys carefully pick your way across the battlefield. It seems like the the demons are otherwise occupied. Um, either they can't sense the gems, or Tressius the the helmet is uh, preventing them, or the the crown is preventing them from detecting it. You're not sure which, but it seems to be working. Either way is great. Uh, and when you get across the the cart or the 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 camp to the uh, the thing, there are um, a couple of demons and uh, and some orcs in, like in a pitched battle, like outside the tent. The the demons seem intent on getting in. Um, for all that, the weapons don't seem to be affecting them. The demons don't seem to be immaterial; like they're not passing through the the orcs. There is some physical component to them. Uh, so the orcs are basically forming a forming like a barricade at the entrance to the tent. All right. Uh, I will try to convince the orcs to let me through. This is urgent. We're going to save everybody's lives. I got to talk to the empress right now. The orcs are in no position to even listen to you. They are basically fighting for their lives. Can I slip past them? Then uh, I want to slip past them. Give me a give me a move roll. Fast footwork doesn't count on this, right? It does not. 
I'm pushing. I got to. I'll take it. Uh, so, yeah, so as you guys kind of come up to this battlefield, kind of hanging back unless you want to get involved. Um, no. And the, the orcs are, you know, forming a, forming a line, holding back these demons. Um, the, um, the demons seem to be less mobile in the light. They're not flitting around quite as quickly. And they're not jumping from, like, shadow to shadow. But they seem intent on getting into that tent and the orcs are very intent on keeping them out called you kind of slip by kind of like you know catch a you know catch like the the blunt end of a battle axe on your shoulder you can take the point of damage from the the push uh but you do get inside the tent uh and the empress is there and she's basically like in the process of strapping on plate armor all right this is uh this is do or die time uh these demons are going to overrun and kill everything. None of the weapons are working against them. We got to get the jewels out of here, or you're all, or all your people are going to die here, including you. Give me the. Uh, I'm sneaky. I'm fast, and I am not powerful, but I have powerful friends. Give me the gems. We'll get them out of here uh, before the demons even know they're gone. Once they figure out they're gone. They'll come find. They'll try to find us, but they won't. And I will give my best manipulation uh, drama performance. This is no time to think. We got to do this right now, <laughs> or we're all gonna, or or all your people are gonna die. Uh, give me a manipulation roll. That's what I got. I push that. Guys, do you want me to push do you want me to push that? <laughs> it's one six uh, right. you get that? Can I push it? Uh you can if you like. Oh no. Ouch. That was our best shot. Caldi is useless for a bit, except for wits now. She kind of looks at you, looks down at you, as she's like strapping this plate armor on. She's like, "I don't think so." Then we'll take it from your corpse. Enjoy. And he bows and uh, and uh, kind of points his <laughs> hand out to the out to the outside the tent. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the meantime, what are the rest of you doing? You're just standing and watching the fight. But the demons do not seem interested in you at all. They seem intent on getting into the tent. Um, and there are like more and more orcs running to kind of fill in the line as orcs fall. Desi was kind of keeping close to Kaldi until he went inside. She is not engaging. But if something touches her... <laughs> For um, the record... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, she's she's waiting. Um, can I hear Kaldi? Probably not over the dinner battle, no. Damn. Okay. Uh, as soon as, as soon she leaves, I'm looting the place. <laughs> Looks like, I, I have no idea if she's got the gems on her or what, but as soon as she walks out that thing, I'm looting this place. I'm not comfortable in that was really robotic. Fine. I gotta do something. That was fine. All right. uh, what's Trustius doing? Um, I think I'm gonna try to move forward and see if the crown has any effect on these. Um, so yeah, so as you kind of move forward um, to get within, I mean, you have to get pretty close to the demons. You have to be within like near distance. Uh, but as you kind of move forward, uh, the demon's form does seem to solidify uh, slightly. Uh, and at that moment, like an orc's battle axe like catches the demon and connects solidly. 
Desi, keep them off me. Oh, okay. Don't engage them. I don't they have seem, any intention to. They seem pretty intent on killing orcs right now. So yes, I will now be guarding Trustius. <laughs> Since Caldi is busy filling a bag with stuff. <laughs> Well, the, the Dampress hasn't left yet. Like, as long as Kali's in the tent. She's like... <laughs> kind of glaring at him with the, like, you can leave now look. He's just a sound cross-legged. Uh, I ain't going out there. Out there is death. Oh... She will, uh, she will walk up to Kaldi. She'll kind of look down at him. And then she'll kick him really, really hard. I will dodge. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, she'll push. Only one success, though. Uh, dodge is move, right? Uh, yep. If you go to your combat tab and, um, Click down to the the bottom. There's a dodge button. So there is. It's been so long. Fast footwork, standing dodge. I guess that's all I get. Standing dodge, right? Uh, I'm fast footwork. Uh, my fast footwork's two. We'll just do it this way. Ow. Uh, so yeah, so she connects all the... You can roll for your armor. You might be using your little Christmas present coupon. <laughs> oh, your chainmail does absorb the blow. I'll play dead. <laughs> Alright, so you flop over dead. She'll just grab you by the ankle and drag you outside. She doesn't want a corpse stinking up her sleeping area. Alright. Uh, outside, though, she kind of looks around at the battle and uh, the, the the orcs. Uh, she sees, you know, as Tressius moves closer and these weapons are, you know, the orcish weapons are having an effect. Uh, and basically, yeah, between the, uh, the light and the crown, uh, the demons do seem greatly, greatly weakened. All right. As soon as she engages with the enemy, I'm crawling back into the castle. <laughs> Oh no, she's an emperor. She doesn't engage. Armor is for protection. Okay. Um, but yeah, you guys can can fairly easily, assuming you want to, um, basically bolster the orcs so that they can hold this area, and eventually they will drive off the demons. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And o Okatai is saying in chat that uh, his voice isn't working, but he want, wanted to engage too. Okay. Um, yeah, the, between the between the crown and uh, and the torch, uh, and once the uh, once the orcs see that um, you know the the light seems to be having some sort of effect as well, they start like you know like four or five orcs are like lighting torches and just kind of dropping them on the ground uh, while other orcs are are fighting, and uh, eventually you can drive off the demons. And that, you know, once it's, uh, once it's, uh, once it's done, the, the Empress will just kind of like look down at Caldi and say, this one refused to uh, leave my tent when asked. My apologies. I'll kind of look up and wink and say, good kick. So 
So the small one mentioned that uh, you're still interested despite this. We're yeah. interested because of this. Mm hmm. I believe I know a way to kill Takumi, as I said. Yeah. Well, come inside and let's discuss things then. You are welcome. Though. And she'll just kind of she motions to the orcs and says something in orcish, basically the equivalent of like, you know, gather the dead, prepare them for burial. And she just turns and goes back into her tent, like she just expects you to follow her. Trustius with his ten willpower will stride right behind her. Is Kuldi inside or outside the tent right now? Well, she dragged him outside the tent, so... Oh. Are you going back I in? just follow everybody else now. <laughs> okay. I'll get it. I have one we empathy. Got, we got two words from you, York. Try again. I don't know what's work. That's no, not working with Sam, but oh, that works. There you are. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> that's the best you've ever sounded. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Stay now nice we only you. knew why. <laughs> Look to the north, Eric. Look to the north. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that position, like my foot in the air and all. <laughs> don't move. <laughs> Like an old rabbit ears antenna. <laughs> For anybody who might be Salem. listening, York is joining us from like halfway around the world. Yeah. Are you still in Norway? Yeah, I'm still in. I'm still in Norway. Excellent. <laughs> I mean, we we do have viewers on some of our other videos that are from Sweden. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna up there before I leave. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so uh, the Empress just walks back into her tent, pours herself some wine. I'll get in. So enlighten me as to what your plan might be, because we all know that having multiple of these gems is dangerous. Hmm. Mm-hmm. We've had multiple for a while now. My intent is to collect them all for the uh, weapon Dr. and kill the game. That's an admirable plan. We have the pieces. Soon we'll have access Hello, to the Dr. port. I believe this is our best chance. Hmm. Certainly the best option I've heard. Fewer dead orcs. They'll be busy chasing us. Hmm. Oh. Just because my people were bred for being expendable doesn't mean that we prefer it, so there is some merit there. Exactly! Nobody wants to be fodder. Even so just to imprison him, we require all the gems. We know this. Hmm. Putting him in a cage did not work last time. My intention is to end him. And then what? Didn't your husband want the job? Well, he has aspirations. Not to be a, 
a god, but to uh, to bring portions of this uh, this land under our control. It's entirely likely that his brain will work. But I did say that he could attempt it. And you wouldn't have to put up with Felora and Fari anymore. Hmm. I know what they're like when they're pissy and snarly and cranky. Yeah. And the dream thing is just a pain in the ass sometimes. If they're not getting along with you. And the insisting on getting their own way. That's also kind of annoying. I find it quaint. Nobody's insisted they get their own way with me in quite some time. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. But Paul Kanye rubs his jaw and says, I wonder why. <laughs> Every orc that's died here is currently in hell. I've seen it. The other way to free them is to kill the god. She kind of looks at you. She seems to be like mulling over things. Before we go through with this, I'd like to have a word with your husband. Why? If he is trying to, if he is wishing to take Jakku's place, I want to know who he is. And what the blue flame told him. Well, that he was destined to rule. Yeah. However brief. He has no interest in becoming a god. But he is interested in being an emperor. I believe our intention is to leave this island when we can. Well, I mean, if you do so, that would certainly be beneficial to us. Those of you with these uh, sort of tendencies can get in the way of empire building. These sort of tendencies? We have tendencies? You're either a foolish hero if you think that you can build a weapon to kill Jakku's, or you're just plain foolish. Either way, I'd prefer to not have to deal with that. That's fair. I mean, I can be a problem for you building an empire if you try to take the little piece I have on this island from me. Hmm. Depends where that piece is. I mean, you'd rather not give your name because you know some of us know of magic. I'd rather not tell you uh, where I live, since you're in front of an army binding on conquering the world. That's fair. <laughs> but if you try to take that little bit of freedom from me, we're gonna have a problem. And I'd rather let you do whatever you want with the rest of the island, I just want my peace. You intend to stay, do you? I don't know where I'll go. Me neither. I do have some elves that need to... to give me an apology. I am just here for the money and to not to be consumed by a demon. That's all I'm looking forward to. A little bit of treasure, remove the curse, Kill Jakus, I'm out of here. 
Well, then I believe we can have an agreement. Once you've uh, killed Jakuz, you'll leave. You won't interfere with our plans. That sounds like a fine plan. As long as I'm leaving with a little bit of wealth, that's that's perfectly fine by me. But I only speak for me. Looking out for number one here. I assure you I'll leave this island at the first opportunity. And then she'll look at Desi. What? <clears throat> I've got no plans. I only half expect to live that long. So I don't worry about it. That's fair. Hmm. I believe we have an agreement. And uh, as your warrior friend here says, I'd much rather have the demons chasing you than my people. <laughs> yeah, don't blame me for that. We're kind of used to it. I won't interfere with your empire making if you agree to leave me and my people alone. Well, that's a bridge we'll cross when we get to it. Yeah, we ha kind of have to live through stuff first. True. <laughs> Very. I mean, uh, it's it it's just... good that the that the eventual intention is out there. Like, it's great to let people know if you have plans. I'm not bothering because. Yeah. I mean, I just don't want it to be a surprise if, for some reason, this goes yeah. well and yeah. I become a thorn. That's. I'd yeah. rather play cards on. I'm gonna try to keep it that way. And given the whole size of the island, I mean, the area that we kind of claim is pretty small. I mean, nothing that would prevent an empire from forming whatever they want to do. Mm. We have an agreement. And she'll, uh, she'll take off like her cloak clasp and she'll pass that over. Uh, and the uh, the breastplate of her armor. Who's taking them? Well, she, she hands them. What to, were they before? She hands them to Trestius. Uh oh. <laughs> He'll put on the clasp and put on the armor, assuming uh, I can carry it. The armor is actually <laughs> the armor. The armor it's is way too big. Probably. The armor is surprisingly light. It's lighter than heavy. It's a, it is. A, it is actually a light art item. Oh wow! Nice. Finally, a full plate that makes sense. <laughs> Give me one sec here. And that leaves Said one. You, does it? You said you changed the form of them. What were they before? Uh, well, this was a full set of armor, and this previous and the the, uh, the clasp was previously an hourglass. They still retain the same okay. capabilities. Okay. 
when you're does he lean closer to Trustius when you're talking to them? Um, Fari is the one in the armor, and Felora is the one that used to be an hourglass and is now a clip clasp. I think we should talk to them separately. I imagine. I I still haven't had a chance to sleep to let anybody know that we found them. Don't know, sir. No. Hmm. Yes, they will. And one of them is a traitor. Ah. Uh, Not that I recall. The crown. The one in the crown. Yeah, we need to figure out which one. Well, we know which one. I don't know what gem corresponds to who. Like, we're, we'll have to dismantle stuff. Have separate conversations with things. Or collect I mean, toss them all in a room and let them sort it out. Uh, that was what. Uh, getting, letting them get to know each other, um, slowly. They know each other. They likely know yeah. each other for hundreds of years. True. They used to. Time changes things. For most people, maybe it doesn't for elves. You guys are weird. Anyway, thank you, Empress. That's uh, that's great. We would love to leave as soon as possible. We should at least stay the night and get some rest. That might also be a really good idea, actually. Uh, yeah. Um. There's a lot of walking to get here. Will uh, His Majesty the Emperor allows me uh, a discussion to speak of this blue flame? Mm, he's not interested in talking to you. Whatever Does message you would like spark? to... Uh, whatever message you have, I will be sure to pass on to him. I'm still curious to see if uh, I'd be willing to believe in his cause. Oh, she can tell you what his cause is, I'm sure. I... And Desio kind of glance over at the Empress and then back at Okatai. He doesn't make his own decisions. Oh, he... I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's... I am keenly aware. <laughs> that is not entirely true. He but, makes uh, many of his own decisions. I'm I'm not judging. Uh, more power to you. I provide guidance. Mm-hmm. Trust us, will not like he understands. <laughs> You've been there, lady, right? You know, just yeah, I get you. It's exhausting. I just want to. I just want to know what this blue flame stands for, and I want to know what this empire stands for. Well, for a long while, my people were subjugated, and now my husband believes that we should be in charge, and I see no need to dissuade him of that argument. I don't want to. Persuaded them of anything. I just want to know if we can be friends. Mm. We can be acquaintances. My people have had a rough batch, too, if I can say so. I'd rather we be allies than we be enemies. 
Well, if your people were more than just you, we would be open to negotiation. Unless you speak so for more what? Wolfkin. Yeah, it's not only me as a Wolfkin on this island. Do you speak for the others? I'll see what we have to say about you first. I guess I'll have to be an official ambassador in their name before I know what to expect of your people. There we go. Perhaps now you have a goal. But we would be open to negotiation with I... the Wolfkin tribes. Glad to hear it. Oh, hey, just hoping that I'd have something to tell them about you. Hmm. Tell them that the orcs are on the move and we are interested in bringing portions of the island under our control and we're curious whether the Wolfkin would like to join us or not. We'll keep it simple. Sounds fair. And this uh, blue flame only wants for him to be great and him to be king. No value, no request from the people. I honestly don't believe the Blue Flame actually spoke to him, but he believes it does, and that's enough. I'm pretty sure the Blue Flame has power. I've met her before. I'm just not sure what it stands for. Hmm. It doesn't mean it had spoken to your husband, though. But I would really like to understand what it wants. Hmm. Perhaps you should Especially ask if it. an empire is forming under its name. Yeah, our last conversation didn't go as well as I'd hoped. Oh. If he, if we had an avatar of the blue flame fighting and working in its name, maybe it would have been an easier conversation. But I understand that it won't be so. Well, all of this politics has made me weary. You can be off in the morning. I do need sleep. Thank you, Wepers. We will let you know once we're successful. Thank you. And as you make your way back across the back across the camp, uh, you see the orcs have basically gathered a bunch of a bunch of the bodies. Seem to be building like a pyre. I will observe whatever rituals they go to, if they have any religious thing going on. Uh, it doesn't or seem any to... manifestation of the blue flame when they do their thing. Um, it doesn't seem to be religious in any way. It's more utilitarian. It's easier to burn a body than it is to dig graves. Yeah. And there's less things for necromancers to raise. Feeling yes. called out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I haven't raised anyone in like 30 sessions. You make one death night, everyone gets excited. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you guys can make your way back across to your tent. And uh, decide what you'd like to do. Uh, Ryzen, quick Ryzen. recap. Uh, we figured out a way to use the crown to help the orcs defeat the demons and talk the empress into giving us the gems uh, and now sure we're out of here. Sorry, can you repeat that? I had the volume up on on Foundry for some reason to stupid loud. Yeah, sure. We uh, we have the gems from the empress. We Why? killed the demons Why? with the help of the orcs and we're going to bed. 
script thing. Oh, uh, if some of you want to sleep, you can go for it. I'm gonna stand guard. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't understand how you can get so tired looking when all you were gonna do was go in and talk. I'm an old man. I get an old man's pain. I mean, he got kicked all like, quite hard in oh, the face. Yeah, the kick. That's valid. An imperial kick. kiss. Never pleasant. Pulled his shoulders, scooting past the guards to get into the tent. <laughs> uh, I plan on hanging and and standing guard, making sure we don't get double crossed through the night. And, All right. Uh, I managed to get a chat with other guards. I will. Or just watching and listening. Okay. Um, yeah, the, I mean, there, there's guards patrolling around, engaging in idle chit chat amongst themselves. You know, talking about, you know, like, you know, when are we going to get another poker game together? And, you know. Just basically idle, idle chit chat to, as they as they kind of walk their patrols. It don't seem like religious zealot at all. They don't seem religious in the slightest. I mean, that blue flame killed me because of who I am, so I'm very suspicious of it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they they don't seem to be they don't seem to be religious. There's there's no overt talk of religion. There's no oh the emperor thinks that a burning bush talked to him. He must be crazy. Why are we following him? There's none of that. Just a you know just the idle chit chat of of guards wasting away the hours. Um, night for me. Yeah, uh, they are like very professional when they walk the like walk their rounds they uh you know there's they they, they kind of work in in pairs uh definitely have like assigned patrol routes uh there's overlap like it's it's a well organized well disciplined watch order We should split the jam for the night if somebody wants to try to sleep and speak with them. I expect if we stay together, then we should all speak. Oh, yeah. I'm standing guard, but you guys can sleep and try to see if you can get something out of that. Mm. And get some rest at the same time. Just not sure we're not going to get double crossed, so I'd rather stay up. All right. All right. Uh, is Tress just uh, keeping the crown on while he sleeps? No. Okay. Chris, can I ask a quick question about the recap I read that yep. I missed? Yep. Did we did we see Tresty as being handed the gems by the the orc? Oh yeah, she specifically handed them directly to him. The it's a, a breastplate and a um, and like a, a cloak clasp. Did he have any noticeable change in demeanor, like you know, like a Bilbo or Frodo, my precious, or anything that I could discern? Uh, you can make an insight roll, actually. Um, no, you're, you're pretty confident giving Tressius's complete lack of empathy that he'd be really, really bad at hiding any sort of, uh, emotional True. outburst. Uh, you're, you're, you're confident that there's been no, uh, no effect upon him. Okay. He, he literally cannot even roll empathy. Yeah, the, uh... Yeah, I mean, I still think he's a megalomaniac, but there was nothing to make him make me immediately go, oh, it's time to put old Yeller down. Yeah, so there's certainly nothing more than what you already suspected. 
You're you're confident that he hasn't gotten any worse. Okay, Raceland. <laughs> Huh. All right. Uh, anything else folks want to do before crashing for the night? Nope, just crash. Um, does Tessius think he's safer with the crown on or off? Uh, you're, you're confident that for whatever reason the demons didn't notice you, even though you had more gems, gems than the Empress did, while you had the crown on. So better, better wear that then. Yes. It seems as though the magical dampening effect also affects the uh, the ability for Jakuz to find the gems. Oh, right. So, Justice is checked out. Do anybody else want to try to speak with either the armor or the, the brooch? My thought was that I would take Griff and hopefully bring everyone in. And if no. not, then at least we'd all be together. I... Just be careful what you send with all of them in there, because I think one of them is might be reporting to Jakuz. Don't know how, but fear it. One of the ones in the crown. Yeah, I don't know how she could send information to Jakuz, but... I feel like she is. And is what we were thinking, yes. <laughs> yep. Um, Briath really doesn't but like you. <laughs> like, consistently, always doesn't like you. At some point, she's going to have to get over that. Um, yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. Do we really want to do a big get together before we try to speak with them separately or? It seems I think, to be the oh. fastest way. I think telling. Andra that we have them and getting information from her about how to deal with them would be better you know yeah. since she's nice and she knows them <laughs> and she's usually fairly willing to talk I'm just I mean we still have a few days travel towards the dwarf. We have a few yeah. nights in front of us, so we can split that into different nights. Yeah. Um, I can try to talk to her tonight. Sometimes I want to dream about her and don't, and sometimes I don't want to, and there she is. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I could try. And... We can do whatever other chatting we'd like to do with unknowns when we're not surrounded by an entire camp of orcs. Well, I do Good have news to sleep, is... and I do need to wear this crown, so... <laughs> Maybe Culti will let you borrow his bedroll so it's not quite as uncomfortable. <laughs> Because that thing looks like a nightmare to sleep in. No pun bad. intended. Well, we'll see everyone in the morning. All right. Good 
night passes uneventfully. Uh, there is no attempt from the gems to contact you, and if you try to dream of them, everything is like kind of like staticky. It's it's like when you were like younger and you're trying to watch the pay TV channels and your parents didn't pay for them. <laughs> so we see elf. We see scrambled elf boobies. Uh, oh God! No. Yeah, it, like. <laughs> Like they're they're trying to trying to make the connection, or you're trying to make the connection, uh, but it doesn't seem possible. So I can't talk to Andra. Weird. Not so much. Crown's probably brought, blocking. Probably. More importantly, can we hit the rest button? Everybody can hit the rest button. I feel so much more useful. <laughs> uh, you don't have to roll for food and water because the orcs will feed you. Oh, wow. Hospitality, even. When there's food for 500, there's food for 502. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I mean, they've got more food this morning than they had yesterday anyway. Because there are fewer orcs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Sorry, because why? There are fewer orcs than there were yesterday. <laughs> they can afford to feed us. Uh, but yeah, you guys are invited to share a meal and like the kind of with the the common orcs and stuff. Uh, they're they're kind of busy like striking camp, getting ready to move on. Hey Chris, can I ask a question about one of the talents? Yep. Since Berserker doesn't have like tiers to it, does it still only go up to three? I uh, no. I mean, there's not much sense in having it higher than your uh, than your highest attribute because that's what you get back when you're broken. But you, you could have like five ranks of Berserker if you wanted to. Oh. Yeah, so I'm looking oh, at what to wait. start spending XP on next, and that might have appeal to me. It's either that or skills. So I didn't think that was an option. If that's an option. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's super expensive, but it's an option. Yeah, I mean, one f a fourth level Sorry, would be that? nice. It, it's expensive because it's still like 3, 6, 9, and then it would be like 12, and then 15, but it's an option. Uh, but yeah, the orcs generally leave you to your business, you know, after like, you know, perfunctory conversation over, over breakfast. Uh, and... Uh, you can, uh, Okata. You can tell that they are uh, they are planning to head uh, east. Well, there's a town called Height that you okay. might want to visit. Yeah, Height might have been already raised by uh, angry dwarf. Yeah, yeah. There's a dwarf and necromancer who was headed in that direction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they are going toward our village at some point. Oh, um. The guy with the gingerbread cookies, man, things is to the east of here, isn't he? Pretty sure. Uh, yes, he's almost due east of here. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting this image of all these little cookies running around, orcs trying to stomp on them. I thought you were going to ask about going back and getting a gingerbread army. I mean. 
I had this really weird it. dream one night. Thankfully not an Andra dream. But, uh, yeah. It was weird. But there was a gingerbread army. I was really kind of relieved to wake up. All right, uh, so which direction are you guys headed? Uh, north, east, or west, I guess. Uh, yeah, because yeah, we're, we're, we're going, going east, we'll go north. northwest. Probably a good idea. Right? Yeah. And then it's faster to come down since we've already explored some of these hexes. Mm. All right. So I will need a uh, lead the way roll and a scouting roll. I can lead the way. You want to go west? Northwest. Yeah. Northwest into the hacks we haven't visited yet. I think Caldy's are secondary scout. He's just AFK for a second. I can lead the way. So my scouting is four. Mine's only. Oh, yeah, mine's four as well. I, I got five. Your dice, are, your dice are more trustworthy than mine. <laughs> Am I rolling scouting, or does somebody already do that? Uh, no, go ahead. Zero successes, no banes there, Okatai. Uh, could you push it for me? <laughs> Caldy's getting his butt kicked today, and he hasn't done it. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking too much. I'm just out of practice. Oh, so it is, uh, it is hard, hard going. I'm not, I'm not stressed anymore. I have the talent that make that if I fail, I can just spend the will and succeed. Oh, nice. So I, I cannot get lost anymore. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you guys, uh, you guys travel on. It's you know kind of nice to, you know, get on the move again. Pressing through the uh, pressing through the the woods and into the the foothills of the mountains. You know that the dwarven refugees, when you last saw them, were uh, just kind of to the the northeast of uh, your current location. Uh, but Kaldi, as you're scouting ahead. Through the through the forest and through the trees, um, you kind of catch up above you in the trees, um, like rope bridges, kind of going through the through the canopy through the trees. And even though down at the ground level, it's like a nice calm summer day. Uh, up around where the, the the rope bridges are, you can see the the leaves moving in a slight breeze. I'll go over to Okatai and say, point the the uh, rope bridges and the leaves and stuff. Isn't that an elf thing? Uh, not just elf, but somebody's living up there. Show me where you saw that. I'm gonna go take a look. Yeah, I'll show. Okay. Um, so yeah, you look up and there are uh, definitely like uh, worked rope bridges between different tree branches. Uh, some of them have like wooden planks. Some of them are just like, you know, suspended ropes. Um, 
they're all probably about a good 20 30 feet off the ground you do see as you look up there's like little birds flying around them like squirrels running back and forth on the on the ropes does that seem abandoned or uh no actually it looks like it is well cared for okay are there footprints on the ground uh none I, I might be wrong, but I have a little druidic feel about all this. Uh, so I'm going to try to do a greeting. So do not tread on somebody's territory. I was going to ask, is there any signs of like tents or small huts or, you know, basically place to live up there? Uh, give me a scouting roll. Um, you don't see any signs of one. Um, and, okay, you kind of like, so what do you do for your greeting? Um, I'm going to go in a, in a druidic fashion and, uh, find a, find a log or something that is down to knock on it, to like make a sound that is definitely not natural. So you know that somebody's there. And then make a, a call. A uh, wolf can call. Uh, so yeah, so Zoktai kind of like does this druidic greeting. Uh, a very kind of uh, almost like melodious uh, female voice from up above. It's like, who is it? Uh, sorry, I didn't intrude. Oh. Passing through your woods. Oh, these aren't my woods. And kind of like out of this very well camouflaged uh, tree house. Uh, it's kind of like shimmers slightly as it comes into existence. Definitely hidden by magic, which is why uh, Ryzen didn't see it. Uh, but this uh, like 30-ish year old uh, red-headed female kind of like pucks her head out of a window. It's like, hmm, visitors. Would you, would you like tea? I just put some on. What race does she appear to be? Uh, human. That's some very impressive Sorry, magic lost... you have. Oh, thank Sorry, you. Sorry, I lost connection for a minute. Uh, thank you. Uh, I do. Uh, I, I do my best. Um, would you care for tea? I have scones as well. It's like, of course you do. You're travelers. Travelers would always like to stop for tea. And she kind of like waves her hand, and like a rope bridge descends from like where her treehouse is. Kind of like unrolls down to where you guys are. Well, if you guys are mine, I'd love to have a, a chat with the lady. Yeah. She doesn't seem like she wants to kill you. Sure. She seems to I be quite, in the same as yes. the guy who made the gingerbread man. <laughs> the people in the middle of the wood offering tea. It... I mean, if I lived alone in the woods, I'd probably be really keen to talk to people just walking by too, but... Well, exactly. I don't get many visitors. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, 
I really, really love the trick about hiding the, pla the place where she's. So I'm kind of curious. <laughs> There's a halfling guy, like east of here, who is a baker in the middle of the woods. You know, if you ever want something to go with your tea. This food is delicious. <laughs> so I'm gonna go up. Do you mean Melkar? Uh, I think that was his name. But, but yay tall, thin red beard. White clothing, baker's hat. Yeah, exactly. That's them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're, we're no longer speaking. Oh. But, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. I'm gonna go up that, that ladder. Uh, and as is the uh, Okatai, as you climb up the ladder, the, the smell of tea and fresh baked goods is very strong. As somebody who's got a little bit of uh, alchemy or whatever, do I smell anything that could be untoward, like a poison or something? Um, no, no, actually, it smells, uh, it smells like tea. Um, and as you guys move, uh, get up, uh, actually, is anybody other than Okatai climbing up? <laughs> I'm not climbing. Crap. <laughs> uh, do you want to boost up there? No. <laughs> I'll stay down here with the safe with the other people. Well, I'm going up. Okay. Uh, strap me to your back and I'll call with you. So Okatai and Ryzen both went up? I haven't gone up yet. Okay. Trust me, we'll go up. I haven't decided if I'm going up. Yeah, me neither. How high do they seem to be? Like, how high does up does she seem to be? About 20, 30 feet. It's hard to judge exactly. Do I feel like falling 30 feet today? If you have to debate that question, then there are problems. You never I mean, want to fall 30 feet. You never want to fall any feet. It's more the of a thing you want to fall in is a nice comfy bed. Yeah, but that's like way off from here. And not from 30 feet either. <laughs> Depends on how comfy the bed is. It's it's kind of a weighing like, do I trust delicious tea? Or do I think I'm gonna end up falling 30 feet to the ground? The other question is, if a couple of us go up there would they and, and they get into trouble, how easy it is, is it going to be for us to get up there to, to bail their asses out? Yeah. Oh, I, mean, that I definitely want the tea on what's up with the, the bitching with Melkor. That, uh, Unfortunately, this is one of those situations where if even one of us wants to go up there, we should all go up there so we have each other's backs. Yeah, if Kaldi's going and Trustius is going, I should probably go too. For the yep. for the uh, the paranoid amongst you, she unfurled the rope without touching it. So if something goes apeshit up there, she might be able to roll the ladder back up. Yeah, that's bad. All right, I like the ladder. I'm brave. Very brave, probably. And yeah, as you as you guys climb up. Um, you know, it leads up to basically like a little, like one of the one of the rope bridges with the, like the, uh, the boards across the bottom. So it's a little bit wider, a little bit sturdier. Still sways like, a little bit. It's like indoor, but without Ewoks. Exactly. 
Uh, and there's a there's a bunch like of like the local the the local wildlife is just you know watching you. Well, there's our Ewoks or Snow White. Uh, and yeah, the, this uh, this woman kind of comes out of this uh, this hut. Um, she's you know like I said probably in her in her early thirties. She's got like long red hair that's done up in fairly ornate braids. Uh, like like French braid like up on top of her head so it's uh, she is dressed like in like a black dress probably homemade like, come inside is she human? she is human okay sorry I'm not sure if I got your name I'm rising oh uh, my name is Astrid Come, come, come. Glad to make your acquaintance. Yes. Uh, does your name ring a bell at all? Uh, no, it does not. Uh, in, in as much as Astrid is a moderately common human name. Uh, and so as you, you know, she basically comes out, greets you, and then she turns back in. And you, you can see, like, through the door, she's, like, tidying up a little bit. There's, you know, like, overstuffed armchairs. Uh, there's ornate rugs. The, the the hut is a fair size. Like it's not it's not Tardisy. It's not bigger on the inside, uh, but the the way that it's crafted out of out of the trees, it is fairly substantial. Still one room, but a, a fairly large one room. Oh, that's quite a nice setup you got here, Astrid. Thank you. Uh, I've worked on it for quite some time. Um, come inside. Uh, could, could take a seat. Yep. Uh, the inside is piled high with teacups. Uh, like every flat surface has like teacups and saucers on it. Uh, some of them are obviously <laughs> sets. Some of them are not. Uh, but it's like if she was a hoarder who only collected tea sets. Uh, the only thing other than that that she appears to collect are the fiddles hanging on the walls. Okay. Uh, Kaldi, uh, those fiddles, those are all handcrafted masterworks. It's like if the entire, it's like if a room was wallpapered in Stradivarius violins. Oh, my God. <laughs> and gold, are we, uh, we're not getting a fiddling contest here, are we? Uh, no, no, unless you play. If you play, I would love to hear. Chris, can I do a lore uh, check? I'd like to know if zero, so I don't think I can play. Sorry, was that a lore check? Yeah, I want to do a lore check. Is there any kind of creatures that have a tendency to, I don't know, steal fiddles from travelers or steal other musical than, instruments? Other than a devil at a crossroads? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I don't. I, I mean, if we die to a hillbilly from Georgia on this island, then so be it. Hillbilly death. Uh, yeah, you can definitely, you can make a lore roll. No, I'm not pushing. I'm already down a width. Uh, so, um, she's got a wide variety of teas. Uh, she's got a kettle that seems to be constantly just boiling over the, over the fire. Um... And even though it's not a large kettle, she easily serves all of you, all of you who want some tea anyway, uh, without having to refill it or anything. It's, like, it's been so have long since I've visitors. Have you ever played a fiddle, Risen? Yeah, probably casually at some point. I was more of a uh, rhymer and, you know... Her dancer than anything, as I've demonstrated yeah. my dancing on many an occasion to Desi. Yes, I do remember. Uh, yeah, can't forget. Oh, I would <laughs> love to see your dance. <laughs> well, well, if you insist, my lady, now, and I will break out into a dance. Oh, dear God. We're about to get kicked out of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching the tea, by the way. N-O. No. <laughs> I just start breaking out oh, yeah. into a 
um, into a interpretive dance that Desi loved before to try to snap her out of whatever she had going on in that day. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Astrid, Astrid is I'm quite going to drink the tea. It is. It is. And I'm going to go along tea. the walls and get all the different. I'll examine the, uh, the different the violins and ones that will complement another great. I'll compliment on her or on them and kind of roll off like I'm a no no too much guy and know it all even though I can't play a damn thing. Uh, yeah, e each of these violins is probably worth as much gold as you've made your entire time here on the island. There are there are like violins here like from from different cultures from like different parts of the world. Um, all of them handmade in each of them an individual work of art. Uh, we're cool. Uh, and she will serve tea to everybody. Everybody waits while Caldy gulps is down. He doesn't. He doesn't die. <laughs> Her canary. <laughs> and he dies from. So what brings you by? We're looking for um, dwarven refugees. Oh, the dwarves. Ah, uh, yes. Lovely people. You have to know where they are. Um, I think their camp is... She kind of like spins around kind of like absently and then points in a direction that's kind of vaguely northward. You must not have many visitors around here. I don't see hardly any people. I mean, it's okay, really, for the most I mean, part. If you, if you set up here, you must desire a bit of uh, tranquility. Well, you ever think that you want something and then you get it and you realize that you don't actually really want it, but by then you're kind of committed? <laughs> yeah. I get it. I expect I'll learn that soon. Mm. Well, eventually they grow up and move out. Though. I mean, it gives me a chance. <laughs> gives me a chance to practice my magic. So there is that. Oh, what kind of magic do you do? Uh, I play music. Uh, you will kind of look over at Trestius like I'm just gonna say it because you're about to anyway. <laughs> Uh, I, I play I play music on the fiddles and uh, and I'm really really good at telling people's fortune. Let's uh, once you're done your tea, uh, if you would pass me a cup, I'll tell you your fortune. Is that how you enter the place? Pass please? Up. Sorry, what was that, Okada? Is that how you enter this place? Oh, I have an agreement with some tree spirits. They do favors for me. I do favors for them. You know, one must endeavor to be a good neighbor. Yeah. That's a good philosophy. I'm um, curious. Trying to keep everybody safe while we travel is always uh, a task. And as Caldy kind of passes her his empty cup, she'll kind of like stare into it. She gets this kind of look on her face. She kind of looks over at Caldi. She looks back at the leaves. She says, hmm, I see a dead king sitting on a throne. But I don't think it was you, so it's probably okay. Might be one of our friends. I've never wanted to be well, then, if you're not a king, you don't have to worry about it. Somehow you're involved in the death of a king sitting upon his throne, though. So hopefully he was a bad king. Was he dead, not moving or dead and still doing his thing? He was dead. Yeah, hmm. that doesn't mean as much to some people. Oh, maybe. Uh, Emmeline would know more about that, but I'll uh, not really on speaking terms with her right now. So, is that your sister? Yeah. 
actually, I'm out of game trying to remember. We we met the the woman in a, a cart, and she said she was looking for a sister, but I don't yep, remember she her did. name. Yep, she did. Was it Astrid? I think it was Astrid. I don't have Astrid anywhere else in my notes. I'm looking for Emmeline. It's hard <laughs> out of game to try to remember everything, and I don't have my notes because I'm not on my computer tonight. <laughs> uh, her, the, the name of the woman that you met before was Mortilla. Okay. Oh, good. Yes, mm -hmm. I just found it. I don't think she mentioned her sister's name. No, she didn't. How did uh, how do people get out of speaking terms? He seems to have a, a beef with uh, this uh, Mordecai. I don't have people I don't, been rude? I don't know who that is. Uh, sorry, not Mordecai. Uh, Emily? The, 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 the... No, the baker. The athling. Get the baker. Oh, Melkar. <sighs> Melkar have fans... people been rude to you? Uh... He's a little standoffish. I don't know. Have you met him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he offered us pastry when we were coming by. Yeah, he's a he's a little off his rocker. Um, I think he I think he spends too much time alone with his baked goods. I mean, don't get me wrong. I spend a lot of time alone too, so I know how this sounds coming from me. Uh, but. At the same time, I don't make baked goods that come to life. So yeah, good. Okay, so we all know about that. Excellent. That's. I was trying not to say anything because I didn't know if you knew, and I didn't want to. Yeah. People should that not mess with magic they don't understand. It's pretty creepy shit. Nothing good. Do you know where that like magic is from? How do you how, how do you how do you understand it without actually trying to learn it and do it? Well, there's ways. I mean, usually you find an instructor and then the instructor teaches you the stuff without actually teaching you actual magic so you understand the risks and repercussions. Uh, and then you understand those and then you understand how cause and effect and causation. And then eventually you can probably maybe cast spells. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That sounds like there's this concept of uh, responsible magic use. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's kind of what I've been taught. <laughs> you need to make sure that you don't destroy everything when you do that. Exactly. Magic is so easy to go out of control. I'll just stick with swords. I try to be careful. I try to play. They both seem to work great for me. <laughs> I personally try to be careful, but I cannot swear that everybody does. Mm. There's, there, there's a lot of bad magic in the world. Yeah. I've is there seen bad that. magic or is it just the person wielding it and their and what they intend to do with it? No, there's I mean, there's bad magic. There's magic that can corrupt you. I've seen magic that I don't I cannot imagine how what they could be used for good. But it might be, be might be me lacking imagination. So I mean, it's not necessarily like evil magic. I mean, evil implies intent. But there's definitely bad magic. Just like there's like, there's some mushrooms that you can make into tea, and there's some mushrooms that you make into tea if you want to kill your opponent. But uh, those those ones there, those, I pass those to Zora. Zora knows what to do with those more than I do. Zora's uh, a neighbor. Oh, she's another one of my sisters. She's uh, she's an alchemist. She's got a she's got a hut not far from here. Not on the ground. I've been... Me and Risen have been experimenting with alchemy. Trying to understand it. Oh. It has been a complex journey. Oh, Zora. Zora knows all kinds of stuff about alchemy. She knows, she knows how to make poisons. She knows how to fix poisons. She knows how to make things that make you stronger. Uh, she knows how to make things that turn you into animals. She knows how to make things that turn you back from being an animal. Uh, she knows how to cure diseases. She knows how to give people diseases. That would probably be a very interesting conversation we could have with her. That'd be really handy for some cool. of us who have 
problems. Don't like her. I mean, I've been trying to make a poison to kill a demon, so having some input from somebody who's no better could be interesting. Mm, Zora would probably know. And maybe a cure for me, Trustius. Oh, yes. Why are you guys sick? A little bit. Yeah, uh, blood demon. We we managed the cure to prevent it from being contagious, but uh, they still got some of the side effect. Mm, I don't know anything about demons. Some kind of magic disease. It's contained for now, but not cured. Hmm. Zora might know. I'd oh. be curious to uh, have a talk with her if she would have us. Well, I mean, she's not as... She's not super friendly with outsiders, but she does see more people than I do. Uh, not probably because she's on the ground and I'm I'm not. But, <laughs> uh, but her her hut's like, I don't know, maybe a mile that way. If we mentioned that we met you, would that be good or bad? Oh yes, yes, we're we're friends. We get along. Okay, good. <laughs> um. You said you had some ability to predict the future and see beyond the site? I can read your tea right? leaves, yes. So so drink up oh. and uh, and let me see. How could I was will finish his uh, his draught and pass the, the cup? Right. So she'll again she'll stare at the leaves. Take a look. Kind of quizzical. Let's see, I see uh, a man clad in green, uh, bringing the end of the era and ushering in a new one. Hmm. I'll have to keep a close eye on people wearing green. Uh, if if I may be so bold to ask, was the magic you use of druidic nature? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Did I... the tree teach you? No. My older sister taught me. One, uh, uh, one of the teacher I met taught me how to turn into a bird. But I know there is still much for me to learn. I'm always curious when I meet other people who talk with the trees. Mm. Yeah. Map taught me, but I don't think she would teach you. And I'm not talking That's to her fair. anyway. So. <laughs> no, you might have had a, a few advice for me. Well, Map has gotten crotchety in her old age. Does, does the name Mab ring any bell for me? Um, no. Okay. I mean, it's definitely it's definitely like an older human name, but not super uncommon. Okay, just wondering if it was an entity that I could have known about. Uh, would I mean I imagine. In, if you're passing through, you're probably hoping to get to the door sooner rather than later. Uh, you're welcome to stay as long as you like, of course. Uh, but uh, when you're ready to go, uh, I can pack up some tea and some scones for you. 
I wouldn't say no. That he was. Is anyone else curious about their future, or would you rather let it for surprise? I prefer to be surprised. It's a good answer. I mean, it's often wiser. Surprises make everything Surprises make better. Everything. Besides, if you allegedly know how it's going to go, it's probably not going to go that way because you might try to do something to prevent it. Not just that. So. That's, that's very true. And if it wasn't for surprises, you wouldn't have things like birthdays and holidays and stuff. So. Well, the birth birthdays. Be there. well, the birthday's not a surprise, but when people buy you presents. That's a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some people do that. Yeah, in some cultures. Where hmm. the where the fiddles gift? Some of them. Some of them are gifts. Some of them I made. Some of them I found. You, if, if you, pardon me, but you look like you have a, a love for the uh, for the fiddles. I do. Do you like to hear me play? Absolutely. Sure. Well, pick one. Can I make a little uh, check to see which is the very best one? Uh, let's call that a performance roll. Uh, yes, absolutely. You can go like that one. So Just trying take- to impress her. So she she takes it down and she does uh, she does start to to play. Um, you know, at first it's uh, like a very simple song, um, but it kind of like you know uh, you can tell like she probably maybe hasn't played for a little bit. But once she kind of gets her gets her confidence back, uh, she is uh, an exceptional fiddle player. Uh, and uh, Okatai and Trestius and Kaldi. Uh, you guys can all sense magic as she plays. Wow. Is it going through the crown, or is she far enough away? Sorry? Oh, sorry, I gotta lean forward this mic. Um, does the crown not stop it, or is she far enough away from it? Uh, the crown does not stop it. Interesting. I listens to the music and try to focus on whatever magic is going on. Um, and it seems to be uh, basically like the, the song she's playing is kind of like a the best way that you could put it is like a like a like a tragic ballad sort of thing. Um, and you can you can feel yourselves kind of feeling the emotion that she's playing. Um, but it's not a, it's not a magical compulsion. It's just because she is that good. She can make you basically feel the emotions that she wants through her playing. But, uh, for, for Trestius, uh, it would not be hard at all for her to completely control your emotions through her playing with magic. I mean... That's fair. I can do that too. Uh, but yeah, she plays for like three or four minutes. You know, like finishes up the song. You can tell like as she's playing, she's feeling the emotion as well. That's interesting magic. Oh, thank you. I haven't played in in quite some time. But... So it's beautiful. Maybe I should learn to play an instrument at some point. I think everybody should learn how to play an instrument. Everybody should know how to play an instrument. Everybody should know how to bake bread. Everybody should know that magic is inherently dangerous and you don't mess around with it. I mean, that's life skills. 
And when she when she says that last part, she'll specifically look at Ryzen and give him like a big wink. Because <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility. Exactly. I mean, one day Risen's dens will be magic. And that's a big, big responsibility. It's already magic. It puts smiles on people's faces. Exactly. That's a great I mean, kind of magic. The world could use with more smiles. I know Desi has trouble hiding it, but I can tell that she smiles on the inside. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I'm known for. Mm -hmm. Right, sit on the inside. That's true, you did. Desi I'm will... Uh, oh, sorry. sorry, Desi will reluctantly um, sort of nudge her empty teacup toward uh, our host. She'll take it and she'll like look at it. And she'll give Caldy the the violin to, to fiddle to put back up. She's like, if you don't mind. No problem. Can he reach? Just just will watch you put it in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Replace it with a clever forgery. She kinda looks at it and she's like Hmm. I see seven blue orbs surrounded by a pool of gold. Huh. That one's a lot less distinct than the other two. Seven blue orbs surrounded by what? A pool of pool gold. Pool of gold. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, you sound like you know what that means. That's <laughs> for seven, seven what? That is excellent. It's it's not uh, the clashing of swords and grinding of metal. So, hey, that's a plus, right? Sorry, what was that again? Seven orbs? Mm-hmm. Yep. Surrounded by a pool of gold. Although that's... Anyway. I mean, I could see it. Yeah, right? I'm just... That's not what I expected. I figured it would be the clanging of metal and then darkness. But So you're saying that this was a surprise? Yes. Well Today happy is birthday. Not my birthday. <laughs> 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 I mean it might as well be. Sure. Let's I don't know when it is. Let's call today my birthday. Well, there you go. Happy birthday. Thank you. Well oh, damn, I need to find a gift now. No, you really don't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you it's beautiful what? hat. Yeah, yeah. Well, Seven, I've eight. given the gift of dance, so I'm. <laughs> I, I was already given tea, and that's more than I've ever gotten for a birthday before. So yeah, I'm good. Excellent. Uh, but yes, she will. She will let you guys hang out for as long as you like. What were you saying, Trustees? Oh, yeah. Simply Sorry. asking how we'll do, bro. Uh, if we're going to count today as my birthday, I would be 25. You don't look a day over 102. Thanks. Oh, well. You're welcome. <laughs> I will, mm -hmm. knowing what I know about you, that's fine. I can, I can take that the way it was intended, I think. Well, I'm uh, grateful for your hospitality, Astrid. Uh, we'll probably be coming back this way once we found the dwarf. So we might stop to say hello again when we are back. Certainly. And uh, what was the name of your alchemist friend? Uh, Zora. 
Zora. I think it would be wise for us to have a, a little chat with her if she will have us. Yes. Before we leave. Maybe she can help us with uh, the disease. And maybe she can help me with poison. <laughs> it's not the most... It's, it's a bit distasteful to take, talk about poison, but it's for a demon. Uh, like I said, Zora probably knows much more. I mean, Emily knows a lot about demons and undead and stuff, but Zora knows about poisons. Is Emily uh, around here too? Uh, Emmeline, Emmeline's got a tower. You can probably see it from Zora's hut. Okay. Oh. Um. Are there uh, rivers at the base of it? No. The tower? No. Okay. Just wondering, because there's a tower not horribly far from here that was kind of built where some rivers come together. Oh, the one oh, on the, the ice one. Oh, the, on the other side of the mountains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's not Emily. I don't know who that is. Good. Uh, no one good. And she's not there now. Oh. Neither is the tower. Oh, well, uh, if she wasn't fair. good and the tower wasn't good, then it's a good thing it's not there anymore. We'll see about that. I mean, surprise. <laughs> I was hoping at some point to find teaching on divination and farsight. <laughs> so maybe we could know our whereabouts. Yeah, I don't know how to teach those things. Yeah, I understand that your magic and mine are not exactly the same. So, sadly, I could not teach you either. Would have been glad to exchange knowledge with you. But yeah. I'm very glad we can exchange tea in the meantime. I'm happy for the company. We will, uh, we'll have to be on our way, but I'll make sure to stop and say hi when we come back. Oh, certainly. I'll be here. Uh, while I'm up in the air, would you mind if I just sent one my bird home? No, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna take a bit of time to write a message home to Kogan. Okay. Uh, to warn him about uh, the blue flame that they might be coming uh, towards home. Might miss it, but just to be aware. And if they come to our door, uh, mention that we've spoke with the Empress and uh, we're supposed to carry on a task for her. So I try to play that so that they leave us alone. Okay. And I'm going to send one of my birds home. If I, well, I cannot see the map right now, but uh, would uh, if I send the bird home, if he fly back home, would he avoid the orc army right now? Uh... Probably. I don't want him to just get shot. <laughs> probably. He would probably avoid the orcs. Okay. I'm gonna try that. Hopefully it's get there. Okay. That's why I got some birds. And yet, yeah, and uh, Astrid will, will pack up some tea and some scones for you. Uh, she has a very lovely, like, boysenberry jam. She packs up as well. Mmm. Jam. Nice. Happy birthday to me. Boysenberry or poisonberry? Boysenberry with a B. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong sister. The other sister would give us poisonberry. <laughs> Here's some jam. Don't eat it. <laughs> it's the jam you put on your sword. <laughs> it's the jam you feed to the enemies you want to go away. Uninvited I'm guests. I'm gonna picture that. You have to put jam on your sword. Put jam on your sword <laughs> and stab somebody in the mouth with it or something. 
I mean, remember the, the demon bark wood? It was pretty much jam, and that's... I'm pretty much thinking about putting it on the sword. <laughs> yeah, kinda. <laughs> What's he smearing all over that harpoon? D don't ask. Just don't. Jam. <laughs> Attracting bees and all kinds of <laughs> flies and stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Or, and you guys can make your way back down to the the forest floor. And, uh... Uh, if that's alright with everybody, I will think I, I try to follow the direction to get to Zora's place. Sure. Maybe she can help us with disease and poison. For the try. And in the words of uh, she... I heard about some recipe she's supposed to be able to make that even me or Risen have never heard of, so. And help we can get, eh? Um, so I'll walk us a mile in that direction. Perfect. Yeah, it's it's not hard to, to find uh, Zora's place through the forest. Um, I mean, you guys are used to traveling like vast distances. Traveling a mile is like, oh, I guess we're here already. <laughs> oh, I'm like only halfway that. through a conversation. Sorry, is Zora one of the sisters? Oh, yeah, Zora. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, yes. uh, Zora's place is like a, it's like a little wooden hut, uh, kind of raised off the ground uh, in the middle of this uh, small pond. Uh, there's smoke coming from the chimney that changes color every couple minutes. <laughs> uh, and then there's a, a ladder that goes kind of from the front door down to the uh, the water level, the top of the pond, where there's a boat tied up. Hey, is the hut on chicken legs? It is not. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> it is no, not. That's why. That's why we need to explore that island. Every time we do, <laughs> looks looks what we found. I've already used Baba Yaga in a game, so. <laughs> A game, but you run so many. What's to say she can't appear in this game? There's right. a one-year moratorium between each Baba Yaga appearance. It's, or it's else not the, a game the, I the play copyright it. the copyright fee are unimaginable if we do it more often. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay her the house oh. eggs. <laughs> um so yeah, so little pond the pond's probably like 30 40 feet across and then the, the hut in the middle of it a moored up boat hello oh. oh and from here you can actually clearly see a um a tower um probably about Probably a couple of miles off, but you can see the top of it over the canopy of the trees. And which sister was um, in the tower? Uh, Emily. The, Thank you. The one who, who knew more about the dead. Yes. The next stop on our weird sister's tour. I mean, might as well. <laughs> <laughs> if they're all living in the neighborhood. <laughs> Oh, um, I, I imagine I'm going to go and knock. You're just going to swim over, are you? Oh, the the pond is that big? Uh, it's... It's weightable. It's probably up to your chest. Oh, I was thinking about walking around it, but does the pond do the, like, um, emote around the heads? Yeah, the, the hut is kind of in the center of the it's pond. It's on little stilts, wasn't it? Oh, it, it is on yes, little nice. stilts. Right, right. Oh, I get it now. Sorry, I, I didn't visualize it. Yeah. We could just call over. Oh, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Just call over. 
Well, hello there. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. Well, he's trying to put the moons on the hut. <laughs> or the boat. I'm going to stand over there with Trustius. <laughs> you guys do whatever you want. I will stay back here. Yeah. And uh, just as a, like on, on a quick glance around uh, for uh, Okatai and uh, and Ryzen, a fair number of the the aquatic plants and stuff that are growing in this pond are uh, either usable in um, in poisons or usable in like alchemical preparations. It's like a little like kind of like aquatic alchemy garden. A botanical nice. garden. Uh, and as you as you yell out, uh, you see like the the door opens. This very young looking human blonde uh, female, hair kind of in a messy braid, uh, hand stained, probably about a third of the way up her forearm with uh, like berry juice. <laughs> She kind of like looks out. She's like, "Not interested." Uh, Astrid told us that you might be able to assist us. Uh, maybe we could be of service. And even at this distance, you can see her like roll her eyes. Like, uh, fine. She like climbs down the, the little ladder, gets in the little rowboat, rows it across to the shore. What sort of problem do you have? Which one of you is dying, or which one of you wants to die somebody else? Huh. You have lots of very interesting clients, I see. People come to see me if they need something fixed or they need somebody dead. I mean, I well, get it. I get it. I like her already. Direct to the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me and my like friend Risen have uh, started working on alchemy on our side. Yeah, you didn't answer oh. my question. Well, I would like to be well. There you go. <laughs> and so would Trustius. What's wrong with you? Uh, they were touched by a blood demon. Okay. Yeah, that. Excellent. Demon fever, yeah. demon red disease, something. I We've been working on trying to keep it yeah, at least in your mission. Mm. Crimson fever. Sure. Feels like your blood is burning. You see everything in tinges of red. Occasionally you feel like lapping up blood that you see spilled. Ah. Uh, no. I mean, you were doing okay right up until that last bit. Okay, it means the disease hasn't progressed very far. So either... Yeah, Okatai has been making up something. Oh uh, yeah, it's been the, keeping it. We've used a very bars. yummy tea. Okay, because you weren't drinking it. Didn't ask. It's so gross. Yeah, we've used the tree from the bark from the 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 pine that grows on the volcano to keep the disease from growing up. Uh, again, I didn't ask. Get in the boat. Okay. I like her too. <laughs> Tough shit. She's mine. I'm getting in the boat, not you. <laughs> Go on, trust you. Okay. Very nice. Uh, and you guys noticed the whole time that she was talking to you, she rarely blinked. She has so not much coffee in her system that she cannot blink anymore. <laughs> I tried that herb once. It wears off for 12 hours. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and uh, there is there is enough space in the boat for all of you. I mean, it's a little bit... A little bit kind of lopsided with Okatai, but... I get in. I try to keep how cute balance. is she compared to Ad Um, <clears throat> She is... She is very tall, and she has like very like angular features. But she doesn't look a day over a hundred. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and again, she'll uh, she will roll you across to her little hut. Show you inside. Uh, so inside the hut, um, there's like, again, it's like a single room. It's almost entirely filled with cauldrons and like um, like alchemists' uh, materials and bubbling potions and half-finished things and like scraps of recipes like scattered here and there and herbs and dried animal parts and and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, about half of the cauldrons are being stirred. Uh, by like self-stirring ladles. That's either cool or creepy. Uh, I'll choose to find that cool. <laughs> uh, and uh, other than that, about the only thing in here that isn't like covered with alchemy stuff, there's like a small little um, area at the table where she probably like eats. Uh, there's a like a like glass fronted cabinet uh, with some vials in it. The vials are all labeled. Uh, like one says snow owl, one says black goat, one says serpent, one says fly. So, uh, heads haven't exploded, so it hasn't progressed to the fatal stage. Uh, Kind of, she kind of like very roughly examines both Trustius and Desi. She doesn't ask permission or anything. She just like kind of like grabs Trustius and like starts like scanning for like anything where she might see like the the red veins or anything. Like not at all gentle. Hail endure that. Isn't it a bad idea for you to be touching us? Not if you're not contagious. Okay, that's... Yeah, didn't really think about that. Oh, uh, if I thought you were contagious as you mentioned comes in fever, I would have, like, burned you to death on the shore there, so... Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, I can, I can definitely fix this. Thank you. Uh... Going to take a going to take me a little bit of time to uh, to get the potions brewed. What have you offered in payment? Uh, oh, I killed your goose. Jam. <laughs> I mean, I can offer gold, but I it, it might feel a bit rude. Is there anything of interest to you? Oh, gold is never rude. Good. Then money is an option. <laughs> Right. No, I don't care if he killed Jakuz or not. Not really well, any of that. Not any of my concern. He doesn't bother me or my sister, so I don't bother him. We have an agreement. That's fair. Oh. Mm. Don't start none. Would be none. <laughs> Talking about like not going into his business. Would uh would would you be up to teaching me how to turn this into a poison that could kill a demon, hypothetically? No. We could don't you turn it into a poison. We don't fuck with him, he doesn't fuck with us. So that would breach your deal. That's what I'm curious about. I don't know that if it would or not. Ask. I'm concerned he would think it would. Ah, uh, that's fair. Yeah. Any advice on making poison to kill things that are not human? Like dragons? My last attempt, my last attempt didn't work well. Mm. Generally speaking, if you want to kill a dragon with a poison, you're going to want to incorporate some sort of dragon blood in the poison. Ah. Something to give it a little bit of oomph. We do have a bit of blood of the, the last dragon we killed left. There you go. Try mixing that in. I mean, dragons don't dragons don't exactly function like uh, like people. Yeah. So I figure. Um, does the fact that uh, one of us is infected by that blood thing 
indicate that we're having trouble with Jakus, or did the information got to you on other ways? Oh no, there's plenty of demons that can inflict crimson fever upon somebody. So, the rumor that we have a tussle with Jakus just got to you. That's great. What you guys do is up to you. I am not getting involved. Oh no, I'm what? not asking you to. Would you like us, Pivot? Gold works. Okay. I mean, just because I live out here in the middle of the woods and do strange magic doesn't mean I'm going to ask for your firstborn. I don't plan to have one. Good for you. No, Kids are nothing but trouble. <laughs> I, just, I was. <laughs> depending on if you uh, if you have people to trade gold with or not, sometimes people want ingredients or stuff. So. Mm. Unlike my but sisters, I act, unlike my sisters, I actually go to where people are. I don't like it, but I do. Yeah. Sounds exhausting. It's where stuff is. It's where stuff yeah. is. I can gather most of what I need locally, but sometimes I need to deal with people. I I can sense from talking to you that your time is precious. Uh, I still would like to get better at uh, alchemy. Um, Pay attention while I fix up your friends. That's that's good. <laughs> I mean, the only reason I'm doing this in the first place is because you said Astrid sent you. She wouldn't send you if she didn't think you were good people. Well, she That's... was very friendly. There she is. She's probably the friendliest out of all of us. Clearly. She seemed to think so. Mm. She likes you. Well, we get along. I watch out for my little sister. She keeps the riffraff away. <laughs> Not a you're bad very, thing. you're very honest and straight to the point. I like that. Mm. Life's too short to beat around the bush. And the whole time she's talking, she's like grabbing various assorted ingredient, uh, ingredients off the shelves and potion bottles potion and everything. Bottle. If any of that stuff is watching her the entire time, yeah. I was just gonna say if any of this stuff is very obvious on what it is, I'll make a mental note or write it down. And if it's not obvious, I will ask what the ingredient is. Perfect. Yeah, and she'll she will gladly tell you. Like in very like short like she doesn't tell you like oh I picked this up. She's like no, this is like Eye of Newt. This is you know she tells you exactly what everything is, but she doesn't elaborate as to where it comes from or anything of that nature. That's fine. Oh, we're taking notes. <laughs> And she also, she doesn't repeat herself. She expects you guys to keep up. Is there any books in that place? Uh, there are scraps of paper written down here and there, but no books. Okay. okay. She doesn't have time to teach me anything, but a reference book would have been nice. <laughs> uh, and it does take her... The better part, the better part of the afternoon, to uh, kind of get things together. Uh, but um, by the time it's done, she has like this very thick, like dark, dark blue, uh, viscous liquid that she uh, divides into uh, into two uh, two vials. No blessing of the god necessary. Don't believe in them. <laughs> yeah, some people told us that the only way to make a, a cure that would be permanent was to find some temple that doesn't exist on this island to get it blessed by the god or something. Mm, Those sound like people on the god's payroll. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to start a church. Is this something you drink, or do you put it on like an ointment? Uh, no, you drink it. Any special time or mm. dose? Or... Before your head explodes from the fever. That sounds good, yeah. D depending All on at how, once? Depending or... on how you feel about tentacles, you may want to drink it before your arm mutates. 
What? Uh, Trust is yeah. now. Is now good? Yeah, now seems good. It doesn't have to be like drunk at night or no mixed with water or now is good. Uh, then I'm I'm gonna describe to her the the inquisitor kind of guy that was corrupted by like more tentacles and eyes and stuff like that. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That's a that's advanced stage crimson fever. Oh, that's crimson fever. Yeah, I was not sure. What? Yeah, it's a. Uh, the... it's, it's partially disease, partially demonic corruption. You remember the Inquisitor we fought near Eight? Oh. They had oh the yeah. Too. Yeah, drinking it now. Now sounds good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, same with the people from the city and the and the north. It, it had tentacles and eyes that plays it should not. And wings. I mean, Emmeline knows way more about that sort of stuff than I do, but this will fix you right up. Thank you. Desi will drink it like, well, like she's afraid of growing tentacles. <laughs> What's your relation with Emily? She's my slightly older sister. Might want to wash that down on some food, like put it on like a jam or something. I don't know. Unless that <laughs> ruins it. Mm, not a bad idea. How it gets Otherwise, you're you just, you just trying to swallow a, basically something like a syrup. I mean, how it gets into your body, I really don't care. I'd suggest not diluting it, but... Mm. Uh, and yeah, as a... Uh, as this uh, this thick blue liquid makes its way, uh, you can you can feel it like coating, like down down your down your esophagus, down like you literally feel it coating, like your stomach, and everything. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. Um, and then that the kind of like for a minute you feel really really full. Uh, and then it kind of slowly deflates, and as it does, both of you feel markedly better, and you can remove the penalties from your crimson fever. Oh, it's like that was. Death. That was. <laughs> I wouldn't know, yeah. thankfully. That was the uh, empathy, right? That was the empathy <laughs> penalty, and also like the, the the reddish veins that you had showing and stuff have all like fade oh. back to normal. Okay, that felt really gross for a second, but better than a sword to the gut. So, yeah. How did that taste compared to the tea? Which tea? The tea, the tea from like better. an hour ago was much better. No. The, but you know, not as healing, obviously. Oh! This was much better, actually. Even though the weird feeling was weird but again better than a sword in the gut so hey you know yeah most things are not, not the worst thing i've experienced uh so i think there was mention of gold yes mm -hmm. how um. much uh since astrid sent you uh Say three gold. That's good. Here you go. Thank you. Any chance I might uh, interest you in giving me some advice on making poison for demon? Yeah, she'll kind of she'll kind of look outside. It depends. Do you have a camping plan? I mean, the wolves are pretty bad in the woods. Uh, well, since we've spent quite a bit of time, we should be camping. So we're used to dealing with wildlife. <laughs> not like these. You're not. 
Have you any uh, advice and suggestion on where we would be better off? Mm. Probably, you can probably stay with Astrid overnight. I'm uh, not much of an overnight guest person. I understand that. Considering the time, I might take her up on her invitation. But yeah. if, uh, if I show up tomorrow, would you be interested in trading for such teaching? It depends what you have to trade, but I'll be open to the suggestion. Sounds fair. I carrying some different ingredient that we've been gathering around and I can always pay you. Excellent. Um, do you want us to deliver any messages when we go? Mm, tell her I'll see her for supper tonight. night. Stop sending strangers to your house. If you'd be so kind. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Right. Well, as we, sorry. So I'll, I'll see you in the morning. I don't think I'm looking outside. Like, I don't think we have time to talk about this tonight. No. I don't suggest strangers stay in the woods when it's dark. Fair. Good to know. Uh, and Trustius can give me an insight roll. Insight. I am not very good at this. Nope. <laughs> Still nope. All right. Um, so, Trustius and Kaldi and Okatai. The little hairs on the the back of your neck start to start to stand up ever so slightly. Uh, like. All three of you, since all three of you are in, in some way, shape, or form attuned to magical energies. Um, there's like this like, like low-grade magical current that kind of like just started and is starting to, starting to rise. Basically, like if you picture it as, as the, the volume knob, uh, it's currently at one, but it's very slowly being turned up. Does she seem to notice it? Uh, not that you noticed. Is there something happening, or is it just me? I'm just you. Hmm. Somebody's turned the oven on. Hmm. Nighttime is coming. Yeah, I think we should better hurry to Astrid's place. It is getting late. Thank you for your assistance. Thank you for your gold. <laughs> always, I'll, always glad to make a honorable arrangement. And she will. I think uh, we should. Yeah, she she will when you guys are ready. She will basically row you back to shore. I think we should hurry to Astrid's place. Mm -hmm. Nice jog. Yeah, we can uh, throw Colby to each other. <laughs> 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 Just pass it around. Um. So. Uh, as you guys make your way back to Astrid's place. I mean, it's summertime, so it's still light in evening, but the sun is setting and you are in a forest. So um, uh, as it as it starts to get a little bit darker, still plenty of light for you guys to see, but noticeably it is getting later. Um, you can hear howls in the distance that sound like very, very large wolves. Uh, and uh, I'll get somebody to give me a scouting roll. I'll Just do it. Time. Let's 
counting is four right now. Um, so yeah, as you're moving, uh, Caldi, since you are by nature a somewhat nervous individual, um, you're kind of looking around and you you can swear that you see hands popping up from the ground uh, in the darkness, like in the the shadows of the trees. Like as the as the sun starts to starts to set and the shadows get longer. You can see like hands bursting forth from the ground uh, in the shadows of the trees. Dozens of them. Possibly even hundreds of them. Zombies, time to go. There's they're rising from the graves. They're rising from the ground. Time to go. Uh can't stay. What? Uh, yep, picking Coldy up and running. Um, and Tressius, uh, as Caldi says, is a new look. There are. That's more undead than you've ever seen animated at one time in your life. That sounds like a tomorrow problem. That does sound like a tomorrow problem. And more importantly, it sounds like a next session problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as, these, uh, as the undead kind of pull themselves up out of their shallow graves throughout the forest. We will call it there. Those are definitely not wolves that we have seen before. I will resist the urge to try to ride a giant wolf. Try it, undead wolf. Alright, so XP. Uh, Did you participate in the game session? Yes. Uh, Travel through at least one hex? Uh, Yes. Finally. Uh, Discover a new adventure site? Yes. Uh, I mean, de- defeat one or more monsters. Uh, I'll give that to you for the demons. The crown was a really good idea. Yeah. Uh, did you find a treasure, one gold or more? Uh, I'm going to say yes, because you secured the two gems that you needed. Oh, I was going to say the friends we made along the way. I was thinking of the antidote. Get out of my head! <laughs> yeah, I mean, or my birthday jam. <laughs> the antidote was worth three gold. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I was going to say, those potions, the concoction. <laughs> These guys are talking about concoctions when we got an infinity stone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you build a function? No. Activate pride? No. Dark secret? No. Risk your life? Not yet. Uh, any extraordinary actions? Yeah, I don't think so. I try really hard to put myself into trouble with my dark secret with the blue flame, but uh, I didn't manage to speak with the Emperor. <laughs> oh, that's why you were doing that. I'm like, why is he beating his horse? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the blue flame killed me before it. I'm pretty sure it has a link with my past, so oh, I was trying okay, to yeah, get yeah. deeper into that, but I didn't manage to speak with him, so yeah. didn't go, yeah. go to the dark yeah. secret part. Yeah, the the emperor is a figurehead. I did not make a single roll tonight. Oh, look at you, Desi. Uh, one, <laughs> two. Uh, so that sounds That's like uh, sounds like five XP. Yeah. That's a lot for this game. Right. It like is. we hit, we hit the majority of the categories tonight. Like it's I not uncommon to get like three, right? Yeah, I mean three is technically pretty typical. technically and the walls should be finished at home right now, but we didn't come back home to witness the walls. Yeah, <laughs> we could almost get them all. Uh, yeah, as long as a ravaging orc army didn't get there, or yeah, that's why I send the message. Yeah, yeah. Stay behind probably... the wall. You built very a good idea. Wall. Stay behind the wall. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, so yeah, we will uh, we'll see everybody next week for our first game of 2024. Oh God! All right. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Happy, Happy New, New Year, night. everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year's, everybody, and uh, we'll see everybody in the New Year. Yes. Right. Take care. Have a good night, y'all. Happy-